My Bible's not opening. Okay. So last week we got through three. Um, 31-3. And I'm going to be honest. I'm hoping that we don't get past nine today because I don't have the rest of my notes with me. So even if, yeah, even if we really only get through five, <laughs> which is the way it goes, right? Okay. Um, so 31.3 was, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. And I was saying that um, the elect or the chosen or us are to be kings and priests. That's what we are, kings, kings and priests. And refers, and I, it can refer to the things of the world that can destroy us. So 31.4, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. My question is this, is that a suggestion or a command? That's a, I think that's a command. That's, that's, well, you know, let me just, let me say again, this is a book of wisdom. So it's showing us the wisdom. Is it for us to, I mean, can you choose to? Sure, you can choose to. We do a lot of things that we shouldn't be doing, right? But um, it's using wisdom telling us not to do it. Not to do it. Huh? So, oh. drink is shekar. From, it comes from seven nine, that's 7941, and it comes from um, uh, 7937. An intoxicant, intensely alcoholic liquor. I hate to call it intensely because anything that has alcohol that you can, you know, affect your body with. Strong drink, strong wine. So the primitive root to become tipsy. Okay, some people say, <laughs> so, well, think about it though. Tipsy can be, for me, I think that if I were to drink even one small little thing, I would become tipsy. Okay, I'm not talking drunk, falling out, you know, um, can't even speak drunk. I'm talking tipsy. In a qualified sense to satiate with a stimulating drink or influence. And that's where I'm getting to. Okay, or influence. I 100% believe this being for the word exactly the way it's um, read and spoken, that we shouldn't be drinking strong drink. But I'm, gonna, I'm coming from a different angle with my study, so I want to bring this out. So, to me, and through my studying of this, I see that it looks more like we, the people of God, the kings and priests, God's chosen, God's elect, are not to be intoxicated by worldly issues or our dealings with everyday things, which can cause us to pervert justice. So if we think about it, everything out in the world, and I think of young people, but even for us, every single thing out there that is um, um, opposite of God's word is intoxicating. It can suck us in. I mean, we, some of the things that we are involved in or we do um, can take us away from God's will for us, even if it's good things. Don't be weary in well-doing. So, you know, no matter, and, and then also it's all those other things that you think are genuinely bad, you know, that we all look at and it's bad. But there's so many things that are deceiving that it can pull us away. 
So, yes, absolutely, this is, and that's, oh yeah, that's the tipsy part. When I was saying tipsy or falling out drunk. The tipsy part are all those things that we put before God in smaller areas of our life. Not the big, out front, open things, but the smaller things of our life that we do every day and continue to do that pull us away. Even if it's, this is such a, a small thing, but um, I used to get up at four o'clock in the morning. I would pray every day at four o'clock in the morning. Then I got into a terrible habit of instead of praying, I would start doing the stuff around my house because I have to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in, in reality, I could always do those things another time, but instead I would get myself um, obsessing. Yeah. I gotta do this. yeah, over this has to be done. Not that, no, this has to be done. Spending my time with the Lord has to be done. That has to be what I do. Am I saying everybody has to do that at four in the morning? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying for me, that's what, that's what happened to me. And I mean, for years, I, I spent my time with the Lord early, early in the morning. And then that got me. It like really, um, for me, I have to do that first. When I stopped doing that first, it really got me and started putting me over the edge. I wasn't, and yes, did I still pray during the day and do all the things I normally do with the Lord during the day? Yes, but it still wasn't that devoted one-on-one -on -one time first thing in the morning. And I would convince myself, oh, it's okay, because I'm doing it, you know, throughout the day, and, you know, I'll spend 15 minutes here or two minutes here or... You know, and I'm still talking to the Lord. Well, no, it's still not that devoted one-on-one -on -one time. That's what got me, with, and that's why I was saying tipsy. It was a small thing that, no, I wasn't falling out drunk and doing these horrible, horrible things, but it's that one thing that made me tipsy uh, or um, deceived me. Off, yep, off balance. Yes, that's, that's what tipsy means, off balance. Um, go ahead. The very word tipsy is just another word for leaning instead of being upright. What God calls us to be? Upright. Any other influence is tipsy. It causes us to lean one side or the other. Now, coming from my background and what I was delivered from, I came from this drinking all the time mentality and drinking all the time life, because that was my life. That's what I did, that's what I always did, because it's what I've always seen. So when you grow up in that atmosphere and you grow up in that surroundings, you'll tend to stay on the same path. Maybe not as bad, so hear what I'm saying, maybe not as bad, but you still tend to stay in that same environment, okay? This is the message. Verse four, leaders, first word it says. And what's called us called to be? Priests and kings, that's a leader. Mm -hmm. Leaders can't afford to make fools of themselves gulping wine and swilling beer. You don't get any simpler than that. That's simplicity right there. Lest, hungover, they don't know right from wrong, and the people who depend on them are hurt. Use wine and beer only as sedatives, and it goes on to dull the ache, the pain. Why do people drink? To forget what they did. Why do people drink? To forget where they were to forget someone. To, it's always or, to forget, it's always to get you out of your mind. Right. Well, if God has called us to put on the mind of Christ, and, and, and I am so grateful, I bent my knee the day of the Bold Brothers because that day God delivered me from a generation of alcoholism. Every wedding I do now Alcohol doesn't influence me at all whatsoever. When I meet those grooms, the first thing they ask me is if I want to drink. 
That is the absolute truth. That's the first, because they're all drinking, hey, have a drink with us. No, thank you. I'll have a ginger ale at the end of the night. Well, oh, okay. It's all an influence. I'm not influenced by that anymore. And that's what bringing that next level is. It's, it's hard because we're talking about how crazy and loosey-goosey and tipsy people get when they drink. And I'm paid to come in and take pictures of people that are having a good time. Okay? A little, little weird there. But that's what I'm paid for. To come in and take yeah. pictures of people having a good time at a wedding. Okay? When I see this is getting to be too much, and I, the guy that works for me also, we tend to not point our cameras in that direction. Because that's not the stuff I want the bride to remember. All right? We want to focus on the other stuff. So leaders can't afford and make fools of themselves gulping wine and sipping beer. Somebody calls you up, they got a problem. Hey, let's go down to the pub and talk over Budweiser. You see the fine line? You can be a friend to somebody without going there. Mm -hmm. I love the way the message says it. It's very, very simple. Use wine and beers only as sedatives. Let's be hungover and know the difference from right and wrong. God calls us to be upright. We influence, we allow any influences to come in other than what God's spirit is. We tend to lean to the right or to the left. And we all know this. Danny's talking about, pastor's talking about this. The end result is Christ. One degree off in a certain distance, you've missed. That's the balance that all of us in this room as Christians have to believe and trust and know that God is in the midst of this. This is a very controversial mm -hmm. scripture among Christians. When I got saved, people weren't mad because I was going to church. They were mad because I wasn't going to the bar. Mm -hmm. My friends were mad at me because I wasn't drinking with them anymore. That's what they were more mad at me than anything else. And we all hear this, my, you know, you're brainwashed. Yes, my, my brain's never been so clean before. We say that all the time. But this is very controversial amongst Christians that still believe and take the scripture. Oh, Jesus turned water into wine. So why is it okay for, and I just. For everything in I, moderation. That's a whole nother. I, just, I like the way the message said it. It was very, very simple with what it said. Leaders. Don't get caught up in that. It tends to lean, and you don't know right from wrong. So I'm going to take something that Ronnie just said um, in the beginning, and how when you think of um, someone who drinks all the time, they, I know a lot of people who come home from work, you know, and they have to have the beer. I'm, I come from a, my mom's family is from Wisconsin, and they're all a bunch of farmers, and I love them dearly. And they're good Christian people, and they really are, they, they know the word of God, and they live their life so good, but they have to have their beer when they get home. Why? Yes, it's cold. Well, <laughs> and yes, you worked out in the fields, or, or you were, you know, a plumber, or you were whatever, an electrician, whatever, and you were working really, really hard in your physical labor, but why did you need to come home and have that beer? It's a mindset. And that's where I'm coming from with this. You don't need that. You don't need to do that. When you, again, coming from where Ronnie just said in the beginning, when someone is in a habit of um, going out and drinking, they need more to get drunk, which a lot of people self-medicate that way. And because they have anxiety or whatever, it's easier for them because um, to be in a crowd of people to be drinking because it makes them feel, I'm going to say safe. It makes them, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I know that is because it's me. When I was young, I, I, I have a tremendous anxiety issue and I don't like being around crowds. I don't like having people all around me. Um, a lot of times you'll see I have to leave and go and get air or whatever. I can't. I, I don't like that. So when I was younger, you get a little loose. I would drink <laughs> so that I could talk to people, so I could feel all right to do that. <clears throat> so the more you do it, 
the more you do it, the more you're tipsy, the more you need to get that feeling of safety or whatever it is that, you know, whatever. So that's what I'm saying, if we can take it back to what I'm trying to get at. And let's just use my time with the Lord. It was easier for me the longer that I did not do my normal um, spending time with the Lord in the morning, the more I did that, the easier for me it was to say, oh, I'm, I'm all right. I'm doing it this way now. I changed my way and I'm doing it this way now rather than that way. It's still okay. But I knew that I needed to, to spend my time with the Lord in the morning. And that's just one example. But this is, does any, am I going like around that's in this? Yeah, it's exactly like, because pastor always said, you guys always said that, skipping church becomes, once you do it once, mm. it's easy. You make excuses for yourself. It, it, yeah, it, I, I'll be okay. I'll be there next week. I'll, oh, I go every Thursday and Sunday. It's okay if I miss. And I'm not saying it's terrible to go on vacation. I'm not saying that. But it just still becomes easy to take that one Sunday, because yes, it's your day off, and go do something else rather than be in church with the body of Christ where that's where we have to be to be uplifting each other, which is the job, which is what we're really supposed to be doing. That's why we gather, to uplift one another, to be there so we can see each other and have that time with a fellowship one with another, and we encourage one another. I'm going to take it in a different direction. Okay. Oh, my son of my vows, do not spend your strength on women. Yes, that dimension of wantonness and destruction in that respect. But women also has a parallel of suke, the mm -hmm. mind, the will, the emotion, the soul realm. Don't spend your strength on arguing with foolishness or arguing from the soul realm. And don't spend your vigor on those who ruin kings. Is Trump the savior or is he the antichrist? You know, you got, you got both extremes out there going at it. Don't spend your vigor on those who ruin kings. We can, we can drive ourselves crazy with our own thoughts. We can make ourselves not tipsy. Another word is imbalanced. We can lose our balance arguing with our own mind and justifying what we do in the process. You know, in, instead of just believing the word and listening for the spirit, which is always speaking, but we're not always listening. So, uh, so that was just my thought on those. Which is exactly um, my, my, where my direction that I'm trying to be at, is that woman doesn't mean necessarily female woman. It's, it means Suke, let's say that, in that, um, that realm. Unfortunately, the word woman is used in the Bible, and the, I say unfortunately probably because it translating into the English is harder of the emotional realm. Okay. Isn't drink called spirits? Mm hmm Isn't it? I'm asking a question. Is it or isn't it? I mean, go by any liquor store. What do you see on there? Or any bar? Spirits. The king always refers of what? The king. See, we got to get off of this natural stuff. And, you know, we are spirit beings. It comes right down to what pastor's been talking about on Thursday nights. You know, what do you want to do? It's our choice. 
do we want to believe what took place in the water or don't we want to believe what took place in the water? Absolutely. If you want to go out and drink, go right ahead. Go right ahead. It's your choice. And we, we aren't ones to judge what's going to happen to them. Because you can get away with something that I can't get away with something. Right. And I, can't, I can get away with something that somebody else can't get away with something. But I'm learning in my past few years, as I get older, it's better to bite your tongue to say, than to say anything. It's better to lose your tongue than to say anything. Because what you say will end up coming back to roost. And it does. So we're not dealing with flesh and blood. We're dealing with spirits, mm -hmm. principalities of the earth. We're not battling against the flesh. We're battling against the spirit. And the bottom line here is we have to, if you want to be King O'Lemelin, if you want to be the king, here's the direction to go. Just like Ronnie just said, it's plain, it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's our choice. It always comes down. Tim, what you've been saying for years, it's our decision. Mm -hmm. And sometimes to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt, right? <laughs> Just to add a little something um, in the very literal sense of drinking. Um, we had some friends from college stay with us probably two months ago, and they brought us a bottle of wine as a, you know, like a house, we were hosting them. And I said, oh, thank you, and I sat down on the counter, and about two hours later, they're like, do you guys even drink? And we're like, no. <laughs> um, but they're Christians, too. They go to a charismatic church in Western New York, and they're fine with this. And then later on in the conversation through the weekend, I'm talking with my friend, and She's talking about some friends of theirs in their church, and they have four kids, and the husband's leaving her because he's an alcoholic. And I'm thinking, all right, let's think about this for a minute. <laughs> you're, you're condoning something that is maybe okay for you and you can control, but not everyone can. And you're condoning something saying it's fine for Christians to drink, and next thing you know, this person's family and world is falling apart because they can't control it. And I think that we have to remember some of the scriptures that say don't cause other people to stumble and fall. And, you know, obviously everything that everybody else has already said is, is so applicable and everything you're, you're going with, Chris, is, is right on. But just to even think about it in a literal sense, I know so many Christian people that condone this and say it's okay. And they don't realize the ripple effect that's destroying people's lives. And I have a brother that... You know, I, I have it in my family. I have my grandfather was an alcoholic. I have uncles that are alcoholics. I have a brother that's an alcoholic, and you just don't know what you're messing with. And so, just don't do it. <laughs> right. And what we don't understand too, I and mean, this is a get again getting back exactly what the word says, which I'm trying to stay away from, and go towards this. But still, even then, what are our kids seeing? Are our kids seeing us do that? You know, and and then they think it's okay. When I was growing up, my parents didn't drink anything, anything. And as far as I know, they didn't even when I went out to dinner. You know, I think, I don't know. I think that's because kids have a mind that is not developed, and they're seeing, okay, that's okay. All right, go ahead. Sorry. I just want to take it a little step further. Let's go back to the word intoxicating. An opiate, right? <laughs> Something that's going to dull the senses. That can be anything. We're just picking one thing that it says. Mm -hmm. But think about this in your walk. How many things you, you said it, we get involved with. How about we take it even a step further? Just our mindset. Mm -hmm. Just the way we think in general on a daily basis that dulls, like what Stephen said, the spirit that dwells within us. See, the Bible says quench not the Holy Ghost. And an opiate does exactly that. It dulls the sense of the Holy Ghost in our walk. What we get involved with, how we think, what we do. And, and I don't want to jump in what I want to share today, but you know what it ends up being? Every one of you guys said it. It gets passed to another generation. Mm -hmm. And then when we wake up one day, we wonder, oh my gosh, what happened? How did this happen? How did this, well, I, I was doing reasonable service, wasn't I? 
and will wake up one day and wonder. Stand. Stand. Um, sorry, Chris. <laughs> David is the one that prophesied you're not going to get past verse 4. So That's anyway. okay. I don't have my notes. <laughs> uh, I, I just got this thought from the Lord about this whole thing. Because if you take and, and go all the way down through verse 7, it, I think the whole package carries together and it gives you other direction. And uh, But... What they brought up was just think about this. Why do most, you said it, why do most people drink? So they can get away from the pain of whatever. Somebody just said reality. It, it, it's a pain. Some, somebody think their day is painful, so I got, I, got to, I got to take something to reduce the pain. Did you ever consider the fact that pain is the greatest thing you can experience. Because God can do more development yeah. in you in a time of pain than he can in a time of blessing. But we all hate pain. We all hate going through it. It's like Ecclesiastes. He says it's better to go to a funeral than it is a party. Who likes going to funerals? But God can work in us more character in times of experiencing pain. Times of, of not things just not going the way we want it to go. We'll develop faith. We'll develop character. We'll develop more things in us than just the time of having it our way all the time. And God never, ever, ever, ever designed that the fact that we should take, and, and the word that brought me to it was when Tim said opiates. Why do we take opiates? I'm not talking about illegal opiates. But I mean just opiates, ones that are prescribed to us, is to stop the pain. Mm -hmm. And God wants to take us through a lot of times. You don't think Calvary was painful? <laughs> There's no other way to die that is more wicked and painful than a cross. Did you ever get to the place where you couldn't take a breath? And that's what the cross is like, dying on a cross is you hang there until your lungs fill up and you can't take a breath. It's painful. And we need, we need, beloved, every one of us to get an area of life working in us to the point where even pain becomes a benefit to us and not a curse, where we have to do what it says here. It's not for kings. It's not for kings. Maybe if you're weak and you haven't got what it takes, go ahead. But it's not for kings. It's in the trial. It's in the trial that we overcome. How can we be overcomers unless we have something to overcome? <laughs> no, nope. just... just it. I, I don't know if I need to say anything more about it or not. Just um, it's just been so much been said already. But uh, it just when you, because I grew up not with alcoholics, but with alcohol, people drinking, whatnot. And I used to drink because it made me relax, like you. Same thing. So, <laughs> and I used to get so bad. I mean, so, and I drove my car that way. So, 
God knows how I got home. He's the only one that got me home because I was so bad, plastered. But, uh, you know, thinking back, um, but when I grew up, growing up, when I used to watch people drink and watch their personalities change, that used to make me sick because I was so angry because I'm like, oh my God, that's not the person. But it made me turn from what I was doing because it made me feel, I said, I don't like that at all because I see people's reactions and what they did and they still do and, and, and it just sickens me. So, and I know they don't know any better because it's painful that they're drinking. It's very painful because they're hurting inside. But because I chose not to drink anymore and, and that was painful for me because I had a lot of hurt and pain in my heart but to witness to other people, I think, like my family, it makes a difference. I get uncomfortable when people are drinking. I'm not relaxed because I feel weirded out. And I know it's not their fault, but I try to make an example. And my, one of my nieces said, you're not comfortable, are you? I says, no, I'm not. Because I don't drink. And the Lord just stopped me from pot smoking. I never smoked pot. He just took that. I didn't want to. But it's an example for other people when you stand your ground, even though it's uncomfortable. And then I'll lay outside my bed and I'll just, because uh, the, there's pain in my heart, so I lay outside my bed and I just refuse to drink and just cry because there's a pain in my heart. So he's healing me that way so that I can be a testimony to someone down the road, wherever it is, that you too can do the same thing. But you have to want to. You have to see from other people. You have to see other people's lives that are like that so that you can be the testimony. Otherwise, you're just going to keep doing the same thing. And that's why I can't stand drinking. So. This is really such a crazy subject, but it's so real. I mean, just in the short amount of time I've been serving the Lord, how things have changed in Christian circles. We went from never drinking to justifying it. And I love what Pastor said about being kings. God has called us to be kings and priests. It is our choice whether we want to reach out to the high calling in Christ Jesus or if we want to settle for less. God's not going to pressure us into doing anything. He's already laid it out in his word. I'm more convinced than ever this is the road map. You either follow it or whatever the results of it, good or bad, you will, you will um, reap. You will reap, thank you. And uh, it's, it's all about that. And the sad thing is exactly if we, don't, if we don't stay focused and continue to reach out to the very high calling and purposes of God, We'll, another generation that we have influence on will just just take off the restraints and do whatever, the, mm -hmm. whatever they want to do. And the saddest thing is with the drinking in Christian societies, it's, it's been so acceptable. It, my husband and I talk about this all the time. It just blows our mind because I can go through a list of well-known Holy Ghost ministry and think nothing of it. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm not here in judgment of them all. I know what God's called us to. Um, maybe, you know, I'm a little dull. Uh, not exciting. Maybe a drink or two would make people more exciting. I don't know. But I listened to a wonderful c uh, tape last night or CD or whatever, iPod. And uh, you know what? He said, one of the things, it was Bill Johnson, and he said, you want to get excited? Invite a few friends over and start talking about all the things God's done in their lives. You, you start telling stories, you know, and that's what the Lord told the, the Israelites. You tell your children. Mm -hmm. You tell them all about me. Yep. I say that all the time. Sit them on your lap. 
Tell them about the day you crossed the Red Sea. Tell them about the day you got saved and gave your heart to the Lord. Tell them about the times you were tempted and you stood up and said, no, I'm not going to do that. You just tell them, tell them, tell them. You impart into another generation and be strong. There's a, there's a, um, there's a, I'm just going to go with one thing, just one. And, um, getting back to what pastor was saying, there's a song and I know this is just so small. There's a song. I don't even know what it is. Rebecca probably knows the name of it or whatever, but it's about how God uses the trials and uses those low times and uses, and, and sometimes we don't realize just how much he's using those times for us because we're so wallowing in our own whatever, sorrow or whatever it is. I was just, I mean, it's, it, I was just like thinking, why are we talking about this, right? I'm probably safe to say nobody here is, you know, tipping the bottle over when they're, <laughs> when they're not feeling well. But it's, it, to, to hear, to hear, no, I don't, I don't know that, I guess, but um, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure of it, though. Um, but, but I uh, like to listen to Karen say what she said, you know, obviously this is something that is going on in our lives, in the Christian lives, right? Because it's out there, and we need to be wise in how to deal with it. But the scripture that came to me was Luke 18, 1, where Jesus said, men always ought to pray and not faint, right? So if you go to a liquor store, what is it called? Yes, what's, what's a liquor, what do they refer to uh, the liquor store as? The spirits, right? So, I mean, alcohol can do a lot of things. I mean, I was, I probably wasn't. He already said it. I'll skip that. The point. No, no, all of. But the here's my only point then. The the reason why, I don't know if he. I apologize if he said it. Like people get excited. Like in college, people drink because they want to get excited. You know, other people drink because they're sad. Um, but Jesus said, don't faint, right? So why, why do people do this? Why do people draw to stuff that's lesser than what he promised? And what pastor said, it's not for kings, right? We wait patiently for the promise. So the, the alternative for a Christian is prayer, you know? And people don't want to pray because it takes, it makes no sense. There's no, there's, it just doesn't make any sense. And a lot of times you pray and nothing happens very quickly. But he insists, always pray and don't faint, right? But a lot of times we'll pray and then we'll stop. Or oh, I guess we better pray for something else because that didn't work. You know, no, and we all do it. I mean, so I think for me, like I remember, and this is kind of a, I don't think about this often anymore, but when I got saved, I had a really bad drinking problem, and I didn't really know that until after I got saved. And it's actually a miracle that I'm still here. And I, I never, you know, I don't talk about it because it's such an in the past. And it was one of those gifts that God brought me when I got saved, when I was born again. I literally overnight just got delivered from all alcohol, all smoking pot and stuff like that. And it saved my life, but to a point where it was like detestable for me to drink, which was really weird, and all my friends freaked out. But, but you know, you, you see people all the time, and, and even Christians, you know, have bad days. And um, even us, you know, we're like, oh, you know, I, God. You know, that's why people go to the bars on Friday night. You know, they want to let loose a little bit. But, but Jesus said, don't faint. You ought not to, and that goes with what pastor said. It's not for kings. I mean, what do we want? What are we pressing into? When do we let up, right? When do we let up? Do we let, we let, do we let up right before the high calling, you know, and have our, something else? Whether it's, and Timmy said it too, it's, 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 uh, it's alcohol, but it could, it's, uh, it's other things. It's anything that makes you faint. It's anything that makes you sit down before, um, you know what I'm saying. I'm glad you ended with that because... Did the bell just ring? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I want to make sure I end with that. My whole point in this is that we see the whole principle of this. And it's not just in the tipping and drinking, it's what intoxicates you. 
what takes you and makes you tipsy, yep. what those other things, because yep. that is what takes away. Is God going to say, oh, I'm not using you because you drink all the time? I don't think so. I think he's still, I mean, we've heard, there's pastors, there's, there's mighty men of God who have drank, but they're still being used by the Lord. The Lord uses an ass. The, the Lord will use whatever. But what pulls us away from him and our relationship with him and makes it so we cannot judge and do things rightly? What does that to us? That's how I wanted just 